Hi there. It is National Indigenous Peoples Day on June 21st, and it is Indigenous History Month for the whole month of June. And so you might remember that we read a story a couple of weeks ago about Phyllis's orange shirt. And so I'm wearing this beaded orange shirt. Today, because it's important to know about Indigenous history as Canadians, we're going to hear about residential schools and the experience of some children in this book called When We Were Alone. And I'll read this to you. Today, I helped my kukum in her flower garden. She always wears colorful clothes. It's like she dresses in rainbows. When she bent down to prune some of the flowers, I couldn't even see her because she blended in with them. She was like a chameleon. Nukum, why do you wear so many colors? I asked. Nukum said, well, no sisim, you can see her there. Well, no sisim, when I was your age, at home in my community, my friends and I wore many different colors. But at the school I went to, far away from home, they gave us different clothes to wear. All the children were dressed the same and our clothes weren't colorful at all. We all mixed together like storm clouds. Why did you have to dress like that? I asked. They didn't like that we wore such beautiful colors, Nokum said. They wanted us to look like everybody else. So you can see the children in their uniforms that are pretty plain colored clothes. But sometimes, in the fall, when we were alone and the leaves had turned to their warm autumn hues, we would roll around on the ground, we would pile the leaves over the clothes they had given us, and we would be colorful again. And this made us happy. Now, Nokum said, I always wear the most beautiful colors. There's a picture of the children in the fall leaves. After I helped with the flowers, we went over to the back gate. There were vines covering the gate, and they reached all the way to the ground. When my kokum turned to fix the latch, I saw that her braid hung almost as low as the vines. It was like she had a tail. Nokum, why do you wear your hair so long? I asked. Nokum said, well, no sisim. You can see the picture of the gate and the vines and her braid in her hair. Nokum said, well, no sisim, when I was your age, at home in my community, my friends and I grew our hair long, just like our people have always done. It made us feel strong and proud. But at the school I went to, far away from home, they cut off all our hair. Our strands of hair mixed together on the ground like blades of dead grass. Why did you have to wear your hair like that? I asked. They didn't like that we were proud, Nokum said. They wanted us to be like everybody else. picture of blades of dead grass and a child having their hair cut. But sometimes in the spring, when we were alone, and the grass had grown so long and thick in the field, we would pick the blades from the ground. We would braid them into the short hair they had given us, and we would have long hair again. And this made us happy. Now, Nokum said, I always wear my hair very long. You can see the children in the grass 
playing with their hair, probably making long braids. After my kokum had fixed the latch, I followed her to the birdhouse. There was a bird flying through the air like a jingle dress dancer. She fed the bird and whispered, Na pinaisis michiko tamisi kitian tamaskinsian. And her words sounded just like a poem. No come, why do you speak in Cree? I asked. Nokum said, well, no ceasing. Picture of the bird. Well, no ceasing, when I was your age, at home in my community, my friends and I always spoke our language. But at the school I went to, far away from home, they wouldn't let us speak our words. All the children used their strange words and we didn't understand them at all. Our voices blended together like a flock of crows. Why did you have to talk in their language? I asked. They didn't like that we spoke our language, Nokum said. They wanted us to talk like everybody else. So there's the rigid school classroom. But sometimes, in the summer, when we were alone and our teachers weren't anywhere around the place we were, we would whisper to each other in Cree. We would say all the words we weren't allowed to say so that we wouldn't forget them. And this made us happy. Now, Nokum said, I always speak my language. So you can see the schoolhouse and then Further away in the field, the children are talking together. After our gardening work was done, I sat with my kokum in the backyard. Her brother came over and sat with us. He comes over all the time. We drank tea and ate bannock. The tea was hot and sweet and the bannock was moist and warm and melted in my mouth. My kokum and my uncle talked and laughed like children. Nokum, why do you and Nokomis always spend time together? I asked. Nokum said, well, no see Sim. So there's her Nokum and her uncle, her Nokum's brother. Well, no Nosisim, when we were your age, at home in our community, being with family was the most important thing. We played with each other, did chores together, and shared everything. But at the school I went to, far away from home, they wouldn't let us be together. My brother and I were separated like day and night. Why were you and Nokoma separated? I asked. They didn't like when we were with family, Nokum said, because when we were together, we thought too much of home. So you can see the child sitting on the edge of the bed looking out the window. Look lonely. But sometimes in the winter, when we were alone and we were sure that nobody could see us, we would find each other. We would take off our mitts, and in the crisp, cold air, we would hold hands so we could be with each other. And this made us happy. Now, Nokum said as she reached over and held my uncle's hand and mine, I am always with my family. See the two children dressed warmly, but they put their mitts on the ground so they can hold hands. Thanks for joining me.